Thank you, Richard and Bonnie. Appreciate the invite. Uh, Bonnie and I met at the International Union for the Conservation of Nature in Washington, D.C. And I'm very happy and certainly proud to be here today to talk to you about some of the things that Richard uh, touched on. So I'm going to go over a little bit uh, about what has been talked about at this point in time. We are on the verge of the sixth mass extinction, which uh, several people have spoken on. And I'm going to talk to you about what extinction looks like. So this is the Pinzon giant tortoise from the Galapagos. When uh, scientists really took a look at it, they've only found older animals on the island. There were no young uh, species there. Uh, the young Pinzon giant tortoise was not surviving to adulthood. So in 1996, the IUCN declared this species extinct in the wild. And um, this is an iconic island animal, but this is not a unique island example. What is going on here is happening on islands all over the world. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about that. But why are we talking about islands in the first place? Like Richard said, it has a very small footprint, excuse me, very small footprint on the Earth's land mass, but it does have a very large percentage of island, bio, excuse me, uh, global biodiversity. About 40% of the vertebrates that are considered endangered or critically endangered. It also has about 60% of all known extinctions since the 1500s have occurred on islands. So islands um, like Desicheo that were once, uh, as described by Columbus, so rich with seabirds that the clouds were black of, with birds. So um, if we focus on the aspects of extinctions on islands, we can make a dent. We can actually uh, stem the tide of extinctions that are going on right now. So as Richard mentioned, uh, the biggest or one of the biggest drivers of extinctions on islands is invasive species. Invasive species cause the majority of those extinctions on islands. And of the invasive species, invasive vertebrates that uh, you can find on islands around the world, one of the biggest is invasive rodents. They are a driver of extinction uh, at, a, at a great pace. So what you're looking at here is a petrel on Gulf Island. And in the foreground of this camera trap is an invasive rat. And I elected not to show uh, the devastation that takes place from these animals, these invasive animals, to uh, the endemic species on islands. But what, we're, what the rats are doing, what the invasive rodents are doing, are only what they have evolved to do. And unfortunately, in island groups around the world, um, the evolutionary process to defend one's um, self against, against predators and predation has not occurred. So these invasive rodents on islands consume the chicks that emerge out of the hatchlings that come out of the eggs, whether it's bird or reptile or amphibian. They eat the eggs as well. They eat seedlings and uh, just wreak havoc around the world. So uh, I wanna be real clear about this. We are on the verge of the sixth mass extinction on earth and uh, a lot of that is due to climate change and habitat destruction, uh, but the issue of invasive species on islands is, and I'm not saying that it's not for other things, is 100% human caused. And uh, island conservation takes, uh, is very focused on changing the dynamic that uh, humans, we as humans have caused. So what we do is we prevent extinctions by removing these invasive species on islands. Island Conservation is an organization of conservation operators. We protect these endangered species and we are stopping the cycle of destruction that is occurring around the world. I mean, Leilani talked about the birds in, um, or in, the, in the clip on Hawaii. Uh, and again, islands are currently an extinction epicenter. And uh, someone else used the word canary in the coal mine. I believe islands 
our canary in the coal mine for the island that is the earth because we don't have anywhere to go. We are isolated. So uh, a little bit of doom and gloom, but let me talk to you about what we are actually doing and the things that we can measure uh, and, 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 uh, and change the, the tide. So remember the story that I talked to you about the Pinzon giant tortoise being declared extinct in the wild by the IUCN. Well, the reason that it was declared extinct in the wild is because invasive rodents were eating the eggs, eating the hatchlings, eating the juveniles. And so what scientists did is they collected clutches uh, as the Pinzon giant tortoise would lay the eggs, take it into the lab, rear the, the hatchlings until they got rat proof about the size of dinner plates. So it was a massive human intervention just to keep the species propped up. In 2013, uh, Island Conservation conducted an eradication of invasive rodents on Pinzon, and, um, and we have uh, changed the dynamic. So this next video is not slick. It was shot by our veterinarian, Paula Castano, Island Restoration Specialist, as she was doing a survey. It's by a cell phone camera, and you'll hear her in the background. <laughs> this... <laughs> and so this is in Ecuador. Uh, there, this was not planned, and this footage was actually just recently found in Island Conservation's. Uh, we don't have a vault, but in our in our files, and uh, the co uh, communications team that helped said, "Oh, we got to use this." So uh, it is a little bit of a home video, but uh, found during a scientific survey of the island. So. That eradication was done with lethal technologies, lethal meaning towards the invasive rodents. But island conservation is always looking for ways to conduct our operations faster and better and more humane and more safe. And around the uh, humaneness aspect, uh, this is the California Channel Island Fox. It, it exists on um, San Nicolas and the invasive species that was threatening it were uh, feral cats. And so by partnering with the Humane Society, we uh, worked in partnership to trap the cats and contain them, and our partners uh, created a sanctuary on the mainland where those feral cats can live out the rest of their lives and not threaten island biodiversity and not threaten mainland biodiversity. In fact, um, Dr. Uh, Greg Howald, who is a leader in island conservation and also on our uh, genetic biocontrol of invasive rodents team, um, helped write the best practices and publish best practices for the ethical management of wildlife. So I guess what I'm trying to say is we are doing what we can uh, in our very committed efforts to protect endangered species on islands and uh, trying to increase the humaneness. So that's where I come in. Uh, I am the coordinator of the Genetic Biocontrol of Invasive Rodents program, and it is a program of seven organizations. Um, I won't list them, but they're in the United States, Australia, and New Zealand. We are universities, government agencies, and nonprofits. So we are developing this technology for the sole purpose of our work on islands in dealing with invasive rodents. So as has been mentioned several times, uh, the IPBES report or series of reports shows that one million species are at risk of extinction in the near term. Um, this is the Tutururu, uh, known as the Polynesian ground dove. There are only 150 uh, individuals of this species that are left. And by conducting a traditional eradication, we've doubled the, 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 the safe uh, habitat for this. So what we're really trying to do with the uh, new program is look for a, a program, a, a tool that can increase the scale, scope, and pace of what we're doing and save more animals in a more humane manner. I'm going to geek out a little bit and talk to you about Mendelian genetics. And, um, and I'll just say that uh, each parent contributes to one gene of um, the offspring and if you have a mutation in one of those genes, unless it lends a fitness benefit, uh, it will quickly get diluted in the gene pool. Uh, recent technologies um, 
pioneered uh, in large part by groups like Target Malaria, have now to where we can target island populations through genetics and potentially uh, force a genetic characteristic such as being male on those islands. And so uh, without having to kill an individual, uh, there's a potential for using a, st a sterile technology like this to basically have the invasive rodents die off through attrition. Again, these are this is a species specific technology. Um, is it could it be a safe? We are looking at that very hardly, uh, very closely. Is it uh, can it be effective? Can we actually do this? You know, we're we're still working on this. We don't have any. Uh, any of this technology that has been developed at this time, we're working on it. But what we do know is if we can find something that increases the scale, scope, and pace of what we do, uh, we will see ecosystems bounce back, like on Palmyra Atoll, when rats were eradicated from there with conventional technologies. Not only did we protect the uh, in, uh, vertebrates that we had targeted, but whole ecosystems bounce back. There are many stories of finding... Um, animals that have been declared extinct and when an eradication of invasive species on an island takes place, they pop back up or new species show up that you can identify that have been uh, masked by the, the uh, harm caused to islands. So uh, some of the other issues that a new technology uh, could help out with is dealing with populations, human populations on islands. Floriana is where we are uh, looking to do a conventional eradication. There are 140 inhabitants, human inhabitants of Floriana Island, and um, there are many uh, endangered species that are threatened by multiple invasive species. So um, we're doing what we can. This is uh, Wisdom. She is a Lysan albatross on Midway Atoll. Midway Atoll is another program, another island that we are working on. And so uh, the, our approach is, of course, a nonprofit approach. We're looking at having a principled uh, uh, progress made by partnering with regulatory agencies, the reason that we are focusing, focusing only in the United States, New Zealand, and Australia is because of the regulatory systems there are robust and we can have partnerships and help identify where our shortcomings might be. We are engaging with stakeholders, including the folks here, uh, to find out how to do our explorations better, find out how to do our eradications better. So um, I'm going to have to wrap this up, but as we move forward uh, in developing this technology, we are committed to sharing well before any technology is developed, gaining input from conservationists, from animal welfare uh, stakeholders, and others that are interested to find out how we might be able to do it better and to do it safer to protect uh, birds like the uh, Juan Fernandez fire crown and sandpiper shown here. Um, I just want to say that island conservation prevents extinctions now. We're looking at ways to do that more effectively. We're looking at ways to do that more safely. And we're looking at ways to do that more humanely. Are we going to be able to hit all of those? I certainly hope so. Uh, certainly by partnering with uh, individuals and organizations that have aligned uh, values and efforts we can. Um, and I'll just say thank you. And if you would like more information, if you would like to share uh, advice, I welcome uh, questions on the panel and, um, and outside of the conference. Thank you very much.